Welcome to the Bronx Journal. I'm Vasilisa Alonzo. New York City has long been considered a mecca for the immigrant community, but a federal program implemented at the state level now threatens to split immigrant families, deport people for minor offenses, and it could even lead to racial profiling. It's called Secure Communities because it's supposed to keep us safe from criminal immigrants, but some immigrant advocates say many innocent people are getting punished because of it. Joining us today is Yahaira Saavedra, Policy Director of Dream Scholars, a Bronx organization run by undocumented youth, who is here to tell us about how this program is affecting immigrants and minorities in the Bronx. Yahaira, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Can you tell us a little bit about your organization, Dream Scholars? Sure. Dream Scholars is composed of undocumented students and allies who advocate for pro-immigrant rights, both at the national and state level. Um, some of the works that we've done is uh, advocating for the National Dream Act and state level dream legislation. And also we rally against um, SB 1070, um, secure communities, and of course um, the band of the Arizona ethnic book ban. Can you explain to us what SB 1070 is? Sure. SB 1070 was implemented in Arizona recently this at the beginning of this year in which um, it states the local police officer in Arizona could stop anybody um, and ask them f to show documentations um, their status pretty much so if you have no way of show no identification that says that you were somehow here legally into this country you could get placed in deportation procedures Okay, so on May 15, 2012, here in New York, Secure Communities was implemented. Can you explain to us what this program is? Sure, so Secure Community, you could say that the Arizona SB 70 was played a domino effect within the country. Um, so Secure Community is pretty much in a more national level what um, SB 1070 is in a microscopic level at, a, uh, at Arizona. Um, SB 1070 was implemented nationally here in New York. It pretty much carries the same way in which uh, uh, state police officers and local officers um, share information, biometrics with um, ICE agents. And those biometrics could lead to the deportation of whoever is, in, is with the police officer at the time. Okay, so what was the purpose of Secure Communities? The purpose of Secure Communities um, has, can I get a second on this one? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. The purpose of Secure Communities, it's not what its name impl uh, implies. It's not to provide any type of safety, but rather to create to terrorize our country, um, to create term, um, to create some type. Of, people are now scared to go and speak to police officers and ask them for help. Secure Communities was is, was implemented to deport criminals out of this country, but due to statistics, you can see that more than fifty percent of those people that are detained, the immigrants that are detained, are not don't hold any criminal record. So secure communities itself, it's rather rather than protecting our communities, is actually separating and dividing our families. Right. So what has Dream Scholars done to expose the flaws in the secure community program? Right. As dreamers, you could say we have some type of political um, protection because of the defer action and the Morton memo and the low priority memo. So using our shield as dreamers, we believe that we have a responsibility to the immigrant community to stand up and fight for our community and for our parents. The same way we are we have seeked protection and we have received protection from the government to stop deportations of dreamers. Our job as Dream Scholars is to use that protection to further speak out for our communities. So we have rallied against secure communities. We have um, gone to different community events and informed people about the risks of um, secure communities and how we could um, fight uh, together as a community against it by advocating, by lobbying against it, by signing petition against secure communities. Okay. so. 
having a program like Secure Communities in the Bronx in conjunction with a, the program Stop and Frisk, what does that mean to Bronx residents? Well, Stop and Frisk is very controversial because it promotes racial profiling. If um, after the 9-11 attacks, if you are a suspect, a terrorist suspect, you are automatically stopped and searched by the police officer. So police officers are searching people just due to their color of their skin or how they look. Um, so because of that, 90% of the people that have been stopped and frisked are minorities, are people of color and Hispanics. That leads to a greater risk with secure communities because that stop and frisk, all that information is being shared with, secu sec with secure communities, with ICE agents. So it's not a matter of just stopping and seeing, okay, this person is not dangerous or not. Now, if re regardless of whether the person is dangerous or not, their information is being shared to um, with ICE. So therefore, there is more victims within this um, uh, with this system, more innocent people are being stopped and detained for no reason. Sometimes we're just even seeking for help to, um, and asking for help and protection to police officers. So women, for, for instance, that are, um, they suffer or are going through domestic violence are now even more scared to speak up and seek for help um, to police officers because they're their fear is not even now with their husband or their partner, but now it's also with the police agent who might share their information and she could lose everything within a day. She could get deported back to her country if her status, and it doesn't even matter about your, their status because some, many of the people who are being deported are also United States citizens, but just because, again, racial profiling, they're getting deported uh, and are seen, overseen as immigrants. Great. So you just mentioned that U.S. citizens can be deported as well. How does this happen? Well, it's it's something that happens frequently because once you're detained in the police pre prison, your information automatically gets sent to ICE. ICE then, if it gets a hit, meaning that if it thinks that the computer somehow assumes that you have, um, you overstayed your visa or you're not supposed to be in this country, uh, you're automatically um, detained for 48 hours in a prison and then ICE comes and picks you up and then the process happens. Roughly 54% of the cases that are sent to, um, to Homeland do not even, do, these people don't even get to see a judge. So imagine if, so it is a chance for you to even go hear a judge and explain that you're not uh, you're, you were born here, you're, you are a citizen. So that, that's where a lot of mistakes happened and even if you're a citizen, you could get deported because you don't have uh, most of the times the opportunity to prove your status here once you enter through the deportation process. And we have to remember that um, going to prison is a business. Prisons are privately owned by the GEO group um, so they're making money. So the more people that are in jail, the more money, the more revenue they're making. So it's to their benefit to detain and to deport as many people as possible. Okay, so uh, U.S. citizens, when they're arrested, they do enter deportation proceedings, but once they are known to be U U.S. citizens, they don't get deported, correct? There has been cases in which the um, citizens have been deported into other countries. There was one case in which an African-American uh, woman was deported to Colombia recently. So yes, mistakes do happen. Um, and that is one reason why we should, re we should end secure communities because innocent people are being trapped and not only immigrants, but also our own citizens. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, for the Bronx, where over 90% of the population is of minority of a minority background, what? How does that put us in the headlight for racial profiling? Right, for racial profiling um, within secure communities, 19% of the whole secure com um, of stop and frisk. I'm sorry, within stop and frisk, 19% um, of all the cases from 2000. 2000 and early in 2010, 19% of the people that have been stopped and searched 
have come from the Bronx. Um, so that's the second highest. The highest has been is Queens, followed by Brooklyn and then the Bronx. So that is a big significant number in which 19% of our people are being stopped and frisked. And, be, and through that number, 19% of that number, 77% of those people could get filtered into um, the deportation procedure. This, is, this has all been um, discovered by a recent research by the NYU um, Law School. How, uh, what, can the com what can the community do to rally against secure communities? What could the community do to rally against secure community? We could use um, Amherst, Massachusetts town hall meeting as an example to follow. The people of Massachusetts, of Amherst, Massachusetts, all decided unanimously to opt out of secure communities. So even if it's a mandatory program, they decided as a community not to, to support it. That's something that the New York, um, New York City residents could do. If we all unite in favor I mean, in, in favor of going against secure communities and come together and say, hey, we're not going to support racial profiling, this could happen. But that could only happen if we have a unanimous consent if we all come together. So even if it's a mandatory national program, we could um, advocate and go against it. But it will take each and every one of us to stop it. Um, and just to encourage us to rally, Let's just remember that we don't want to repeat history again. This is similar to the witch hunt that was that was happening earlier on during um, our first years here in this country, as when it was getting colonized. You know, people thought that you were a witch, and just the simple fact that I may not like you and call you a witch, you could easily have gotten killed. You would have gotten murdered. It's the same thing that, that's happening right now just because I think you're an immigrant, because of how you speak, how you dress, of what your beliefs are, or of your color, of your religion. I could easily say, hey, you're an immigrant and you could get deported because of that. And it's a matter of just ending xenophobia and, of course, stopping okay. the use of scapegoating. It sounds like, like we have a serious problem here. Um, so if people want to get in contact with you and, and learn more about what they can do to rally against secure communities or even know more about Dream Scholars, where could they reach you? You can reach us at Facebook. Um, just look at us up at Facebook slash Dream Scholars. And we usually post events of upcoming rallies, of any petitions, online petitions that we may be holding. Tehaira, thank you so much for being here with us today. See you soon on the next edition of the Bronx Journal.